All right, all right. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, NASP Community Question of the Week. Uh, this week, we've got a cool question related to sales leadership, and that is, how do I get team buy-in? And if you have not already, click the link above to join the National Association of Sales Professionals and take advantage of all of the different resources we have for sales professionals and sales leaders, including our seller style assessment, such a fantastic and currently complimentary tool. All right, so this week's question, how do I get buy-in from my sales team? And we see this over and over again where sales teams are very much set up for individual uh, performance and competition. And I want to win, I want to be the best, and it, it, it can contribute to splintering of the sales team. And, and we see where people are less collaborative, less wanting to share resources. And although it does create a, a strong urgency on the individual sense, which is important to be a part of having an aligned sales team, uh, the other aspect to it is the team aspect, the group buy-in, and the importance of having team performance goals as well as individual performance goals. When the team as a whole hits this number and everyone is able to contribute at a certain level, obviously some people are going to be more high performing than others, there is also a team reward. And that gives the team the opportunity throughout the week, throughout each day as we're you know in the cubes making calls or maybe it's a work uh, remote situation, whatever it is, we not only have our individual competitive side, which we want to win, which is you know, which is which is good and, and motivating, and there's also the the team side. You know, when when I'm walking in in the morning, it's oh, you know, we, we've got to get these numbers so that we can get this. Um, you know, maybe it's a team paintball outing or a team boating outing or cruise or uh, some type of a ideally a team building activity. Um, there's that aspect as well. So. The question of how do I get group buy-in from my sales team? It's not only have focus on individual performance, but focus on performance as a team and reward the team performance, um, so so that there is an unconscious motivating element as a team as well as as an individual. Give our sales team the gift of both unconscious motivations. Uh, Michelle, what, <laughs> what, what are your thoughts <laughs> on this topic and uh, this question? And we have why? Michelle on the road today, life of a sales professional. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I, I love this yeah. question and I love your answer. Uh, definitely. We want the individuals to be incentivized as well as the team to be incentivized because then we have that unconscious target that we're working toward. And as if you listen to Rick and I, over time, we talk about the mind needs a target, right? So having both aligns us to be of value to our clients, um, to ourselves first, to our clients um, and to our team and company, right? So when we're showing up, it's, uh, if you've ever heard people talk about the win, 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 this is the mindset of when you actually step into a win, 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 right? And you become very valuable to yourself and to others because you are more aligned with your, your responses and how you support people. So it's not just an I, it's a we. And that old adage, there's no I in team. I mean, it just holds true. It's one of those times, it's, it's an adage, but it can also be considered a principle of team building, right? How do I, what I've learned, how do I add value and share that, not keep it to myself so I can stay ahead of my counterparts, but bring it to the team. And as a leader, um, it is our responsibility to create the um, opportunity for that space where people will share their um, wins and their challenges. So I don't need to know everything. What I, what I am called to do is create the space for everyone to optimize what they know. And the example is I don't ask my team to do something I'm not willing to do. Like for me being um, with Rick on this call, I could have said, oh, I'm busy, I'm on the road. And I pulled over and said, this is what we do when we do it together. So I'm going to do whatever it takes, no matter what, to make this happen, because this is valuable to us and our, the way we support our membership. So again, it's supporting the team and, being, and creating the space for people to grow, evolve, and be valuable. 
Fantastic. And, and final thought, which uh, you, you really hit on there at the end, is the fascinating thing about human nature is that, and why accountability is so powerful, is, is that it, it's a whole nother power to be accountable to a team, to do things for others, not just myself. People are much more likely to sacrifice taking an action if it's just for a personal gain versus if me not taking that action is hurting the team. So as a sales leader, it's, it's, it's our responsibility to set up an environment that has the, the, the most different accountability points that our sales professionals can leverage in, in their performance and understanding that we're all operating with you know, this, this conscious mind and this unconscious mind and the unconscious mind has biologically built in certain drivers. We can really leverage that to create the best environment for both the team and the individual to succeed at a high level. So I love this question today. Yeah, uh, any great final question. Questions? No, again, I, uh, the environment, right? And that's the leader's role. The leader's role is uh, not to know everything, but to create the space for all the individuals to thrive. Because what happens is if they don't thrive, they will self-eject, right? And that it makes it, it makes it, it makes it less, um, I won't say less because I want to think in terms of abundance, but it, it creates a space where people enjoy coming to work. People enjoy sharing their wins and people are comfortable sharing their struggles as well. And that's, that's really a great place to work. And if anyone is, you know, is here and you're listening and you want to chime in on your experiences, we'd love to hear those because some people have not actually experienced what that is. And just getting that would be awesome, right? And having the references of what it feels like to be in that environment. Love it. Awesome. Well, again, love the question. Fun time answering it today. And uh, this is this week's NASP community question coming at you every week on Tuesday, noon, Eastern, 11 Central. Again, if you haven't already, we um, click the link above to join the association and start learning more about the resources that we offer to sales professionals and sales leaders around the world. And uh, we look forward to coming back at you next week with our weekly community questions facebook live talk to you next week next week